Um, hi YouTube, I'm just going to do a really quick video here to address um, uh, a question, or it was actually more like a comment that Greg Fernandez Jr. had posted a while ago, and um, we haven't really had a chance to, to catch up because he's really, really busy. And just like, you know, everyone who gets involved in this case gets really, really busy. Um, so um, I just want to clarify so Greg can understand and the rest of you can understand because in his video, <clears throat> he was disagreeing with what I had to say. But I think it's because he didn't understand where I was coming from. So that's what I'm going to explain to you really quick. It has to do with the photo. In my comment um, in one of the videos, I said that the photo shows you everything you need to know. And I still stand by that. Now, he disagrees with that. And here's probably why. When it comes to everything in life, it, 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 my take on everything, and this is my view on absolutely everything that I deal with, is there's a need and a want. Now, does a photo tell me everything I want to know? Not even close, not even close. But what do I need to know, me personally, as I'm looking at this, what is it that I need to know? Because we know the narrative is, as they said, David murdered his wife and child, then committed suicide. What I need to know is, is that true? That's my need. And when I look at that photo, it tells me exactly what I need to know, that he did not do this. So, and that is it. That in a nutshell, that is what I need. That is what it's answered. So that's what I meant by when I said it tells me everything I need to know. Again, does not cover everything I want to know because that's why we're all continuing. I want to know about, you know, the missing bullet. Well, they say they found it, but there's no bullet with David's blood. Um, what about the, the medium velocity blood spatters on the floor and the wall? That's not high velocity. That didn't come from a gun. Um, there was a knife at the scene with their blood on it. That was never looked into. There, you know, a back door open, the missing time frame, the bodies and the state of decomp are not three weeks. Again, don't care what you guys say. It's a fact. They were not lying there for three weeks, had not been dead for three weeks. They were not frozen and brought back. Um, so those are all my wants what I want to know. How did the blood get on the wall? How did their bodies get there? How and how did the poor dog survive? Those are all my wants. But again, what I needed to know was did he do this? Because if the photo had told me that it was a possibility he could, ha could have, I would have stopped right there because my need to know at that point was complete. But that photo told me and my take whether you agree or not, it's okay. You can We can agree to disagree. But the photo told me he was innocent. This was a staged scene. And then from there, I, I, I'm going on and going forward to fulfill the want to knows. So hopefully that explains a little bit better. And um, again, one day, Greg, we've, we've got to meet up. I know you're so busy and I've been really busy and with Dan and, and um, I know all three of us have been talking about doing a video together and hopefully we can get that accomplished really soon. But any other questions? Um, since I tend to actually be, I watch your videos more than we actually speak. So if that's how we get to communicate, that's okay too. At least we're talking and um, have a great day. And again, any other questions, please feel free to um, leave them below. And also I'm putting the link to the petition again. We're up to 140 signatures. I'm so grateful to everyone who has signed. Um, and again, this petition is so important because it is going to be attached to the, uh, the letter that's being drafted that's going to be sent to um, a couple of the other, um, the Dakota County attorney and then the chief who actually decided the outcome of this case. Um, there are steps that we have to take legally or the proper steps, you know, I guess SOP that we have to follow the standard operating procedure. Um, and and so I, since I don't know what else to do, I'm following what the uh, Minnesota Attorney General's office suggested. And I believe in my heart of hearts that um, with more people signing and with more people saying, hey, something doesn't look right here, can you please reopen this case? And I'm not saying if they reopened it, they would come to a different conclusion. Um, I. 
I will always believe he's innocent because of what I see and what I've found. But if they reopen it and they actually investigate, but most of the stuff can't even be done now because it's too late. They should have had a blood spatter um, analysis, uh, analyst in there <clears throat> to figure out these patterns, where the angles were, where were the, the bodies positioned when these injuries happened. Um, that wasn't done. All of the, And they did collect a lot of samples, but not all of the samples have been tested. So there's just so much that was not done. And that's what we're asking. And, and that's what this petition is for. The petition is going to be everybody's name. And then, then the petition will be attached to the letter that will be drafted to these um, two offices. And again, we are just looking for justice, wherever that justice may lead. But, and again, if they do reopen it and they still come to the same conclusion, I'm not going to agree with it. And I can, I can disagree. But we're asking just that a fair and just investigation be done. So if you have not signed it, please do so. And thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.